the idea. People, when they think of programming, they think of a language. That's the metaphor we use for programming. And that's been an incredibly powerful and useful metaphor, but we've forgotten that it's just a metaphor. You see, what happened was when people invented programming almost 100 years ago by now, they were thinking in terms of trying to recreate natural language. There's this brilliant guy named Chomsky who's still around, who had done a lot of studies on natural languages. And in the 40s and 50s, when they were developing high-level computer languages, they thought we should really try to grapple with the complexity of human language and all the different syntaxes and parsing it and all sorts of things like that. And this is part of a huge movement known as artificial intelligence, trying to make computers that think like human beings. And it was a brilliant idea. It resulted in lots of amazing stuff. But there were a few problems with that. One, it's not really that easy to simulate a human being. In fact, we don't even really understand what it means to be a human being. And those of us working in technology are often worse at it than most. The second thing and this is what I've been researching for the last four years that finally drove me to quit Apple to launch this company. Language is the wrong metaphor. What we're really after is, um, I don't even have a good word for it yet, but let's call it a document. I have something I want the computer to do. I want to create a document that tells the computer as easily as possible what it is that I want it to do. I call it document-driven programming, as opposed to the traditional way of language-driven programming. And this concept is at the heart of everything we're doing here in Rohan's Teenage Robot Turtles. And today, we're going to start building that right before your very eyes. So let's get started. Launch my old trusty friend, TextMate. And let's start here. Now, the reason I decided to go this direction is I realized I had a problem. Uh, the problem was that I couldn't really break out my turtles from the rest of my drawing because all this state about the size and the grid was getting mixed up there, and so I had to include them all in one place. And what I realized was this is where I need to bring in these ideas of document-driven programming. The basic idea of is that we have a document that describes the state of the system that we care the most about. And then we have other tools that work around it. Traditional programming, like I studied the structure and interpretation of computer programming at MIT under uh, Abelson and Sussman, two of the giants in our field. And they talked up right up front that computer science uh, is not a science and has hardly anything to do with computers. Uh, computer scientists treat computers the way astronomers treat telescopes, uh, loving tools, but not really the focus of investigation. And one consequence of that is that they really thought of themselves as mathematicians. And the whole semantics, the whole concept, the conceptual space that programming was developed in was founded on these ideas from mathematics. And in particular, there's this sense about mathematics as being eternal and immutable. And the purest form of programming is what people call pure functions. And this is the idea that real programs should be like pure mathematical functions that are just eternal and timeless. And things that deal with state, things that change, things that have to be cached and stored and managed, those are impure. That's really the term that they use for this. And I'm a physicist. I love the real world. And, you know, as a Christian, I've been trying to make peace with the idea of the incarnation that flesh and blood and being human is actually a good thing. That's the other big idea that we're working on in the Swan Factory. And so in document driven programming, you have mutable state, you have a data structure that changes at the very heart of your program. And all these pure functions that you may create over time are not the heart of programming, they're the edges of programming. The heart is this mutable data structure, which we're gonna call a document. And this is both the code and the data as one thing. Uh, one of the big decisions that was made very early on in computing, which was a brilliant hack, was called the Von Neumann architecture. And the goal of that was to sp split the messy parallel circuitry into a chunk over here that dealt with the code and a chunk over here that dealt with the data. And that the data was one piece over here that was your uh, random access memory and then your code was over here in a ROM or a fixed program. And 
that architecture has been phenomenally successful, unbelievably successful for the last, you know, 50, 60, however many years it is. But that has a whole bunch of problems. One, it's incredibly inefficient in terms of power consumption. Secondly, it doesn't deal really well with parallelism when you have multiple things going on at once. And third, it creates an awful lot of complexity. Back in the day, it was just, you know, hey, we're just going to have some instructions here. We're going to write these things. But because those instructions threw away a lot of information about the underlying circuits, we ended up having to add all these other layers and instrumentation, all this complexity. So what we're going to do today, right before your very eyes, is start over from scratch and think about how should we really think about computation and how should we build a programming environment. And it's going to take a little while, a uh, couple of weeks, but we're going to do this and you'll find out whether I succeed or not. All right, here we go.